Often, we'll know what a particular straight line looks like, but we'll want to know what its function or its equation is. So this video is all about figuring out what the equation of a line is, given that you know what it looks like. Here's some motivating data. In this graph, or this, this point plot, we've got the distances that a rat is found after a certain amount of time. So distances away from its nest. So for example, after, well, roughly about 0.01 of an hour, it's about 200 metres away from its nest. And then at various other points in time, a tracking device on the rat has sent data back to an experimentalist who figures out where that rat is in terms of distance from its nest over time. Now these points kind of look like you might be able to draw a straight line through them, an approximation, if you will, over time of the rat's distance from its nest. What we're going to be looking at is figuring out how we might be able to get an equation for that line based on the data that we've got. Now, there are much more complicated methods that you'll learn about in other places, but for now we're just going to keep it simple and look at linear functions. So let's look at obtaining a linear function from a graph. Let's start off by looking at the slope. If we're looking for a linear relationship or a linear function, we're probably going to be wanting some sort of equation like this. The dependent value equal to the slope multiplied by the independent value plus a y-intercept. Now the slope, often rep represented by the letter m or gradient, is how quickly the graph goes up or down as you move from left to right, compared with how quickly we're moving across. And it's usually defined in terms of equation that looks like something like this. You might have also seen delta y over delta x, or the change in y over the change in x. In this formula, the points x1, y1, and x2, y2 are just points on the line somewhere. And we substitute these values into the equation and figure out a value for the slope. Different lines, of course, have different slopes, because they're steeper or shallower in terms of how they rise or, or fall from left to right. So the dashed line here would have a positive gradient. It increases from left to right. The dotted line falls from left to right, so it would have a negative gradient. This line through the middle here would have zero gradient because it neither rises nor falls. Let's have a look at this example. We want to find the slope of the line that joins the points minus 1, minus 4 and 3, 7 in the Cartesian plane. Well, remember, we don't actually need to know what the line is. We just need to know that m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. These are just the values from the two coordinates. If we think of this one as x1, y1, and the second point as x2, y2, we can just simply substitute those values down. y2 is 7, take y2, take y1, which is minus 4, x2, which is 3, take away x1, which is minus 1, and we have 11 on the top and 4 on the bottom. So the gradient here is 11 over 4, or almost 3. That means it's a positive value. So this line would, if we graphed it, look something like this. It would have a positive slope, increasing from left to right. But what about the y-intercept? Well, remember that we're looking for something of this form. Dependent equal to slope times independent plus y-intercept. If we already know a point on the line, like we did in the previous example, we knew some points, that means we know a specific coordinate, dependent, independent. And we know the slope m, so we can go ahead and solve the equation, just rearranging this one for y-intercept. So if we rearrange that equation to get y-intercept, we can subtract slope by independent from both sides and get y-intercept is equal to dependent minus slope times independent. And that essentially tells us what the y-intercept will be. So continuing on the example uh, from earlier, having already determined that the slope of the line joining these two points is 11 on 4, let's find the intercept of the line that passes through these two points. So that's part A. From the previous slide, y-intercept is going to be equal to the dependent variable value minus the slope multiplied by the independent variable value. Now in this case, we can use either of the two points. I'm going to go with the positive one. The dependent value is 7. 
the slope is 11 over 4, and the independent variable is 3. So we have 7 minus 33 on 4, and you can either work that one through using your fractions or on your calculator, and you should find that it's minus 5 on 4. So that's our y-intercept y-value. Part B just says write the linear function describing the line. So now we have the gradient, or the slope, and the y-intercept value. So we can use y equal to mx plus c, which in this case is going to be y equal to 11 on 4x minus 5 on 4, our new y-intercept value. So that's our linear function. Let's write it in a more familiar form, y of x, describing the line through these two points. So we figured out that equation for that line by first finding the slope and then using the slope and a point to get us the intercept. So use a little bit more on this, formalizing things. These linear functions can be obtained in various ways, and here's just two of them. Let's look at the second one first, because this is what we've done in the examples. When we're given two points, we first determine the slope of the line using the formula for m, and then we use this equation, which is just a reworked version of what we did up here, to figure out our equation of our line. So we just substitute in the values. On the other hand, if we're straight away given a gradient and a single point, we can just go right to that second uh, part of the, the second version. So that's two different ways. One works when you're given two points, and one works when you're given a point and a slope. Returning to our motivating data, we've now got an example that says find the equation of the straight line that's shown, I've added that line in now, which approximates the RAT data over all of the time that we're interested in, not just at specific points in time. So we can find this equation or the function for this line using either of these methods. What I'm going to do is work with the point slope formula because I can easily see one point on the line is right here at time zero and distance 200. And then I'm going to figure out what the slope is as well. Now when I try to figure out what the slope is, I can pretty much go anywhere I want with this. I just need to figure how far up does the curve go as I'm moving across. So I've drawn a couple of green lines in here to help me out. And what I'm doing that for is can see the distance across there, that's a little bit more than 0.7. I'm going to make that 0.72. And I can see that my line has gone from 2 all the way up to 2.5. So that's a 0.5 change there. So I can see that my m is going to be 0.5 divided by 0.72. And my calculator is telling me that that is pretty much, well it's approximately, but I'm going to say it's 0.7. So I now have the slope of my line, and remember I also have this point over here where it crosses, which I'm going to say is x equals 0 and y is equal to 2. So I've got my point and I've got my slope. I'm now going to use the point-slope formula right there. I'm going to take that down and figure out the equation of my line. Okay, so the point-slope formula, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. We have m equal to 0 0.7, and we have x1 equal to 0, and y1 equal to 2. That's from our point here. So we can just plug those in, and we have y minus 2 is equal to 0 0.7, x minus 0. Now it's just a matter of cleaning it up. 0 0.7x and plus 2. Okay, so... If you like, you can write that in the, with the function notation, y of x. So y of x is equal to 0.7x plus 2. Now the last thing I'm going to do is check. Uh, y's and x's don't really make a, a lot of sense here. So I'm going to call my distance from the nest d and time t. So we're going to have a function d of t. Now I've worked it all through in y's and x's. That's fine. Let's just change it at the last minute. d of t is equal to 0.7t plus 2. It didn't really matter y or x or what it was. Uh, I just thought it made a little bit more sense with d's and t's. Okay, so there we go. In this video, we've looked at defining an equation for the slope of a line, and we saw how to use it, and we saw how to find the y-intercept, 
the line given the slope and a point, we saw how to form the equation of a linear function of a given line using either the gradient and a point or two points.